and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Comic Corner. My name is Damon, and today I have AF with me, and we're going to talk about everything that came out in the last couple weeks in comics, and we're going to talk about a little movie that came out uh, yesterday for us. Uh, very quickly, very briefly, you can catch more of that discussion on the Agents of Fandom podcast, but we'll touch up on that uh, for reasons. And comic reviews. As per always, I have two books, AF has two books, and we're going to talk about why we both liked or did not like those two books. But the first thing to come out this week, actually came out last week, is a little announcement from DC. They announced DC Compacts, which are five by five, or five and a half by eight and a half little books, essentially manga sized books of DC's greatest hits, essentially. And some of those include like Batman, Court of Owls, All-Star Superman, Far Sector, Wonder Woman, Earth One, Batman Hush, Joker, Harley Quinn and the Gotham City Sirens. And they say that this is a good entry-level books for fans. So, you know, let's just include Watchmen in there too, right? Watchmen, the most complex and deep character under the DC umbrella. Is entry level. Entry level, baby. Sure. sure. <laughs> you want to get in the Watchmen? Well I guess well this, is, this is what you read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know much about it. Um, I, I think you sent me the link uh, a couple of, well, about a week ago or something. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I haven't really been into manga style, um, but uh, who knows? Maybe. Maybe this could be a turning point for me. Maybe manga style DC characters could be a cool um, entry point to that sort of genre. Um, I'm open to it. Uh, I don't know. We'll yeah, so the stories themselves are exactly the same. It's more about the actual format of it. They're, you know, the manga styles as in the smaller books. And they're only going to be nine ninety nine in US dollars. $9.99, which is the price of a manga. And... I think it's good if anyone gets, you know, a little, uh, what's the word, overwhelmed by if they just kind of see a giant omnibus that's $100, or they see like four or five trays that are 12 13 sometimes $16 each, maybe you can squish those down, put those into smaller, more compact, there's a word, stories for 10 bucks. you know? I don't see the harm in trying this if it's a, if it is a success, yeah. which manga has been, you know, a major success here in the West, like major, major success. Uh, why not give it a shot? I think it's a cool idea. Yeah. And I mean, the thing about this industry, it's you want them to start like, take, like doing these experiments, taking these risks and see what what happens eventually we we've, we've seen with marvel animation they've made anime versions of so many stories and those are those are quite cool those are those are quite quite awesome and uh if dc wants to go that route with uh the comic books then who's to stop them who knows this could eventually just pay off and it could become a thing yeah we have seen dc already kind of gangway into the manga realm with actual manga stories there's one that i've been reading I thought it was just genuinely hilarious because it's a ridiculous concept of it's a manga. It's an actual manga, you know, black and white, traditional manga style art, but it's Superman and he's just obsessed with Japanese, you know, quick food, like ramen and just everything like that. So he's been like kind of avoiding his duties because he just wants to go eat <laughs> and like, you know, Batman gets involved because Bruce is rich, you know. And he's like, you want the finest foods? And Clark is like, no, I want this food. And it's just, it's, it becomes this whole thing. It's hilarious. Uh, they've, been, they've been very creative. They've been very open to trying new things. I like it. I'm into it. Uh, another thing that came out this week in D.C. that you told me about, and I was like, ooh. I, I have not been keeping up on uh, the Batman run. But Batman, I guess, has a new identity, AF. You want to tell me about it? Yeah, so so I haven't been keeping up with Batman either, but um, the the article that I read, uh, uh, it, 
it sounds intriguing. It seems like Bruce Wayne's just um, giving up the, his Bruce Wayne identity. And while he's still Batman, he won't be Bruce Wayne anymore. He's leaving the Bat family to Batgirl and Nightwing. They'll be the official parents of the, the Bat family now. And Bruce Wayne will now be a dock worker named Lenny. Um, this will be in the upcoming Batman 139 mm -hmm. uh, by Chip Zdarsky, uh, George Jimenez, and Tommy Morrow, uh, Tommy Morty. Um, and yeah, it's it's basically coming out of what happened in the Gotham War against Catwoman. Um, I, I haven't read that issue, but this is all the information that I've gotten from. The, the research that I've done uh, on this change. But yeah, it's it, it sounds like it could be intriguing. Um, he becomes a sort of a lone wolf. <laughs> uh, dude wants to do everything on his own. And uh, it has a, a, the potential for him to become a more gritty character. I mean, Batman's already very gritty. But I mean, this there's the, the potential for this is quite cool. So something I can say about this, because I read the first few issues, at least the first, like you can say, volume for six, seven issues of uh, Zdarsky's run. And it's called kind of stems around the Batman, uh, the Zuran R kind of persona, which is like that alter ego he thing. threw in the back of his head that essentially resulted from a fail safe. So that's where this stems yeah. from. This is the, the Zuranar kind of coming out and taking over and creating this alternate persona. This isn't Bruce's doing. This isn't particularly yep. Batman's doing. This is like almost like a – when you first told this to me, I was like, oh, man, they're, they're making Batman Moon Knight. <laughs> Man, like, I was like, <laughs> which is hilarious because everyone always calls Moon Knight Marvel's Batman, and now Batman's like, I'm gonna do the most little personality thing too. And it's like, okay, I guess we're doing this now. Uh, I think it's interesting, you know, Batman's just been a character that you've they've done everything with, he's been around forever, and there's like 20 Batman stories a yeah. week, a week, or like a month. Yeah, I'm, I'm exaggerating when I say week. Um, Every solicitations we have Batman, 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 mm -hmm. Batman, and Batman. Batman. So you've done a lot of Batman already. So this is something different. This is really something they haven't yeah. done with him yet. And if you want to keep making new Batman stories and not just regurgitating the same things we have been getting, this is uh this this is something to do. So it's it's interesting. Um sure. And he has a fake mustache. Ooh. Fake mustache. Dude is trying to become Jim Gordon. One hundred percent. That's actually his uh his end goal here. Yep. Yep. All right. Comic reviews. What we all come here for. I have two comics. You have two comics. I want you to go first this week. Cool. So uh, I finally got around to reading the new Miss Marvel uh, run by Imam Vellani and uh, Sabir Pizada. I think that's what his name is. Um, yeah, uh, I, I did the first two issues, actually, and it's it's quite cool. I, I, I think people uh, expected the worst when, I mean, Miss Marvel died back in Amazing Spider-Man. Um, I was like, what are they doing? They're killing Miss Marvel. They're killing Kamala Khan. Um, and when they brought her back, uh, this whole uh, storyline about, like, she's still an inhuman, um, but she's a mutant now as well. Um, and now she has to try to um, navigate her life uh, with that, that persona. She's got a new suit mm -hmm. as the X-Men symbol on there. Uh, I don't know how 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 much we can go in terms of spoilers over here, but um, I, I'm probably not going to try to go too spoilery because I know that you've only read the first. I, issue. I've read the first. Um, yeah. But yeah, she goes. She, she goes to she goes to college. Uh, Bruno uh, actually goes with her, um, like just basically as a as a sort of a chaperone, best friend type thing. And yeah, it's cool, man. I think you said it best. It's basically she's living a Peter Parker life now. We finally have a modern day Peter Parker, and 
it's mm-hmm. it's it's so amazing that it's that it's Kamala Khan. I mean, one of my favorite characters in the Marvel universe. And yeah, what what, what did you think of, about the the first issue? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of us have said that Kamala Khan has been Marvel's Peter Parker since her introduction. Uh, it's just been very natural extraordinarily likable character. A lot of people can relate to her in a lot of different ways, uh, different from how people related to Peter as well. But the way that she's just been kind of going about her story progression just as a character individually, you know, we started her in high school and now we're in college. We're getting our college arc. So I don't know if she's going to have an equivalent of a black cat relationship going forward. I don't know. That'd be hilarious uh, to have. Like she, She's already had some... <laughs> Some bad boy type of relationships in the past in high school. So I'm hoping we can kind of move away with that with her. Uh, but the story itself, you know, she's going there to yeah. attend college, but also to like keep an eye on Orcus with everything going on with the fall of X. So, you know, I wasn't a big fan of when they decided to kill her off and everyone correctly and obviously predicted that they're going to bring her back and make her a mutant to line her up with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is something we've talked about on the show before and how I'm not personally a fan of that. Let the comics be the comics and let the MCU be the MCU. Uh, If it works in the comics too, that's fine, but just don't screw with the character too much. But the first issue that I read... I don't know how much Amon really had a big insight on everything in terms of the writing. I'm going to give her the credit on this, though, because that first issue, it felt like a Kamala Khan comic. Like, properly. Like, yeah. how she talked, how she, the thoughts in her head, how she went about her business. I was like, yeah, this, this feels like a G. Willow Wilson Kamala Khan story. And that was, like, the best compliment I can give the writing on that. Oh, and the art, too. The art felt very nostalgic to that first run as well. 100%. And um, just, like, like knowing that somebody like Iman Vilani is the one that's helping to write it. Like, she's not the sole writer on it. Um, But, yeah, just her insight uh, on the character. I mean, there's nobody as clued up on Kamala Khan uh, well, after G. G. Willow Wilson as Iman Vellani. And um, just just to have her uh, in that point of authority, uh, I think this four-issue run is going to be spectacular. Yeah, it talked about identity and the struggle with her identity, which is something coming off of her becoming a mutant as well as an inhuman, uh, that it's pulling at her heartstrings yep. in her head a lot. And I think right now for that character, that just makes sense. Another book that makes sense for the character right now is Supergirl. And the Supergirl special released this week. And AF, I don't know if you are planning on picking this up. I can try to stay as spoiler-free as possible for you. But I really enjoyed this yep. book. It put Kara in a place of where she is right now with how prominent Power Girl is in the main DC continuity and especially amongst the super family and how she's kind of dealing with that. And although we have seen them, it's almost becoming a little bit of a Captain Marvel rogue. How many times am I going to see these two make up scenario and become friends? Because we've seen that plenty of times between that and now between Kara and Power Girl. Um, I just thought it was really good, and we get a little glimpse of where Kara is right now in her life, and it just makes sense for where she is right now in her life. I know there are some people who don't like this place that Power Girl is in and how she's going by page now. or I, and Like, look, I get when characters develop. You know, they change along with the times and yep. just to update them and to add more story continuity to them. I, I get if it may not be for everyone. This particular story I'm into. I think it's cool. We get a little bit of Kara's perspective of just what it was like being just a Kryptonian on Krypton without any powers and just her life there. Uh, I really liked it. I thought it was phenomenal. The art was beautiful. The art in this Stand out, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful art. Loved it. Who's the artist on on this book? I was just gonna look it up. <laughs> nice one. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 probably gonna wait for the trade to come up and just get it that way, um, so I can binge the binge read all of them in one. 
Uh, but yeah, like I, I love solo Kara stories. I feel like she's such a, a deep, profound sort of character. Um, there's there's so many layers to her, and uh, whenever I read about Carter, like I mean, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, fantastic. I mean, you've you've spoken about this many times before, and whenever I've I've watched her in different animated mediums and 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 even on live action in Smallville, I mean, Carter is such a, a deep layered char- character that you can do so much with. And there's so many different stories to tell because she comes from Krypton. She has a life over there. She was all grown up uh, while kal was a baby. So there's stories to tell over there. There's stories to tell on Earth. There's stories to, st- to tell when she goes out into space as well. Um, so th- th- there's an infinite amount of stories that you can tell with her. So I'm, I'm pretty excited for this Marika one. Tamaki, the writer Skylar Petridge. Patridge, the artist Skylar's art on this. A plus. A freaking plus uh also brings in the super twins a little bit here to kind of continually pester uh cara about what was it like being on krypton and she's just kind of in this whole nother headspace right now because of power girl so i really liked it what's your second book af so my second book is um i i spoke about it on the on the previous episode um we i was rounding up the the end of the flash series and I managed to get uh, issue number one of the new one, written by Simon Spurrier and art by Mike Diodata Jr. Um, yeah, and I don't know how I feel about it yet. Okay. Um, like I told you before, Jeremy Adams nailed Wally West to, to the T. Um, I think Simon Spurrier, he is trying to find his way uh, with a different take. Um, the the family dynamic isn't isn't the the same as what I'm always used to. Uh, there is a bit of, uh, um, I don't know, disagreement between Wally and Linda. Um, but yeah, it's, it, there, there, there's interesting things happening over there with the speed, the speed force. Uh, something, something seems to be happening. We, we still don't know by the end of, of issue one what exactly is happening, but it focuses on different speedsters. So, uh, Wally West, obviously the main Flash. Uh, Max Mercury is in there. Bart Allen's in there. Um, so it's basically going to be how all of them end up dealing with what's actually happening with the Speed Force. And in the previous uh, con- continuity, Linda Park had Flash powers while she was pregnant with the the new baby. And since she gave birth, she doesn't have those powers anymore. So now she's trying to find her way. Who is she? Uh, without these powers that she relied on for a few issues, um, so yeah, it's it's interesting things, but I don't know. Like I'm I'm not hundred percent sold on it yet, but after one issue, I cannot be be guaranteeing that. So uh, I'll I'll be patiently waiting for for number two to come out. Okay, how much of it would you say is in the grander storytelling or plays into the grander storytelling of the Dawn of DC initiative? Any of it at all? So I haven't I haven't seen any branches as yet. Um, I think Simon Spurrier is first trying to uh, lay out his plans for for Wally at the moment, and uh, thereafter we'll we'll probably get get some some intertwining or or, or things with with the other stories. Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, Green Lantern and, and Green Arrow. There's definitely some some mix mix ups going over there. Uh, but yeah, with with the Flash, I think Simon Spurrier is trying to to just get his base stable and and then he's going to start going going a bit haywire into the dawn of DC. Have you read yet uh the new Titans run any issues or know about it? I I have I have not. I have not. Have you are are you planning on it? Yes, I do okay. want to. I won't say um, anything. But like that one I'm probably I'm probably going to wait for a trade over there as well. Okay. Uh, well, um, because my, my subscription is quite full already. <laughs> <laughs> I will not say anything then. And here's one book that I do want to shout this one out first, because originally I was going to talk about Alyssa Wong's Captain Marvel. And I genuinely really liked that first issue. I thought it was really well done. I thought they did a great job with blending an MCU story into just the Marvel current canon and introducing a new character as well. That was fairly likable. And then a book came out this week that I had to talk about. 
And it was Fire and Ice number three. And this Fire and Ice book from Joanne Stair has already been, it felt like a really good like sitcom is the best way I can do it. You know, I we talked about it previously, I believe, where Fire and Ice get banished off to Smallville. Not banished, banished is a hard word, but they get like told by Superman to go to Smallville to go settle down and figure they, their they, life out. They pulled down the big wood, yeah. Yeah, like they, they screwed up a mission. Superman's like, hey, go to Smallville, figure your life out a little bit, and just settle down and figure it out. In the end, they absolutely botched this opportunity, too, because, <laughs> you know, fire is fire and needs to continuously prove herself. This issue really brought, like, a story point so much forward that I was not expecting because it's been very just between them. It's their relationship and their friendship almost at attention. And now there's another element in play where we're bringing in some Norse mythology from Ice's heritage into Smallville. And it's creating like this almost a mad cow disease where people, not people, the cows are eating each other and it comes from like a Norse mythological deity essentially or a ghost, a fiend. And it's starting to make its way into the reformed villains that they've brought into Smallville. And this was an element I was not expecting. Uh, it's still hilarious jimmy olsen made an appearance in this issue to be like hey i was told that you're reforming villains here i'm gonna do a piece in the daily planet lois thought this would be a big waste of time and just you know all havoc breaks breaks loose during that atmosphere <laughs> better hope that jimmy olsen doesn't date any villains i mean we already have we already have that in the in the superman comic um we, 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 the dude is just like, okay, yeah, it's a reform villain. Like, let me just go all in on her. Jimmy, not again. Uh, I actually I do like Jimmy dating uh, villains. Like, we don't get that trope enough in comics, in my yeah. opinion. But, like, when they did that with Jimmy, I was like, this is, this is perfect, Jimmy. Uh, they did yeah. bring something back in this issue with Jimmy. I thought was hilarious. I don't know how it worked just yet and how this really came up, but it was something from Jimmy's past and it's made a reappearance. You know how Jimmy likes turtles? Is it spoiler? Where Jimmy has like a thing with turtles. Yep. He turned into a giant turtle. (laughs) Got it. (laughs) Okay. That is interesting. Yeah. So I really don't know how (laughs) that came about just yet, uh, but it's, this book, it feels like a sitcom in all the best ways. Uh, this issue in particular, nice. I really, really like. I was genuinely laughing uh, many parts throughout this. Nice. That sounds interesting. <laughs> I, I'll probably I'll probably get that as well. Um, I actually have the first issue, mm-hmm. so um, I need to I need to read that that one still. And I feel like the third issue. Uh, how many issues are out now? Three issues? Uh, three. Three. <laughs> I just had to make sure that wasn't a four. Yeah. So I, I feel like the third issue might head to my comic book store within the next seven days, probably. Yeah, it's been... So then I'll, I'll just get those and then I can just binge all three of them. It's been... It sounds cool. A silly good time. And it was also a silly good time. The Marvels. And we're going to talk about this very briefly. Uh, if... You are trying to avoid spoilers. I would suggest for you to end the show right now because we will be talking spoilers. So if you haven't seen the Marvels yet, go watch the Marvels. I had a good time with it. AF, do you want to just give at least uh, brief thoughts before we deep dive? I had so much fun with it. Yes, there was a couple of things that I'm like, oh... They, they shouldn't have done this, they shouldn't have done that. But it's not, it's not game changes. It's not something that I'm like, ah, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hate this movie now. Uh, this, this movie was so wholesome. It was, there was fun, there was, there was action, there was humor. There was so much love in that Khan family. Oh my God, amazing. That, that entire 
scene in the first 20 to 30 minutes with <laughs> with, with the fight, fight in that house amazing there's there's so many things that i can talk about within that first 30 minutes but all in all i i love the movie i laughed so much i i just think it 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 was amazing three female leads perfect i really liked it uh i liked it i thought it was good there were some spots that weren't for me and for some other people in the audience they were absolutely digging it and that made me happy because i was like great this was for somebody and somebody's like enjoying this bit. And that made me happy. Cause I was like, you know, it's not everything is going to be for everyone. Uh, but I liked this movie. I also re really liked, I was, I guess one of the few people who really liked the first captain Marvel, like Carol Danvers as a character. And I liked that introduction for her. And this just felt like a good proper sequel. It was a follow up to that original story. And that's what it was. Um, I liked it. So we're going to go into spoilers right now. If you haven't seen the movie, turn the show off now. Thank you for watching. Look away. Look away. Look away. Look away. Uh, thank you for watching if you haven't seen the movie yet. And go get some comics. So, final spoiler alert. Three, two, one. Um, man, where do you want to start? <laughs> so... I just want to get, I just want to speak about this first and foremost from a brown Muslim guy, all the cultural and religious references that was included in the movie and the director is not even Muslim or brown. A freaking plus. That was amazing. Like she didn't need to do that. She included every member of the Khan family. She included so many things in that living room. There is a, an Islamic wall frame above uh, the fireplace in that living room. That is such attention to detail over there because in, in, in Muslim culture, we treat those things like we protect those things well, with our lives. And during that entire battle, in, uh, that, that entire fight sequence in that front room, the, the frame never, ever got touched. It was always protected. And then later on in the movie where you see all the flirting kittens, you'll see the, the, the frame, the Islamic frame, is right there with all the flirting eggs on saber. So that means that they, they, they thought so much. They thought ahead and they, they took the frame with them. And Naida Costa, I mean, whoever told her to do that, if she did her own research, thank you so much. That was amazing we appreciate it so much and this is why i wanted you to talk about it man because that's something i would and i didn't i didn't notice because that's something i wouldn't have noticed so i love that you saw that and that nate acosta brought that much attention to detail into that story that's that's great yeah i i, I love that so much and there were so many other like cultural differences uh, where Amir is basically uh, chanting uh, supplications and, and reciting verses from the Quran. It's, it was so so cool. Like, Naida Costa didn't need to in, in, insert that into the movie, but she did. And it, it made every brown and Muslim person feel so happy and so warm-hearted. I can 100% guarantee you on that. But other than that, if we're going comic booky references, mm -hmm. what did you pick up? So a lot of the stuff is going to be towards the end of the movie, um, specifically in the post credit scenes. We're talking post credit scenes now. Uh, Maria is in a suit. We see Maria at the end. This is not the same Maria that we saw in the 838. This is not the same Maria that we see in the 616. This is the Maria that we see completely separate. This is now... Maria's second time essentially being a Captain Marvel, even though she said she didn't want to be a Captain Marvel, but here she is in two separate timelines now being a Captain Marvel, being pretty happy about it. This is... I see you. I see you, Maria. Yes. <laughs> this is technically, and the character who shows up, who calls that, who's Beast, Hank McCoy, um, this is technically her binary suit. We only really understand that because it, Hank says it, and it's red and white. The actual logo on there, I didn't recognize. The binary suit that I'm familiar with has like two stars on there. Um, so that was yeah, cool. That's a different logo. Yeah. That was cool. 
Uh, we got a little bit of a Nova name drop at one point when Kamala was thinking of names for Monica, who technically never officially got a name, even though all her merchandise says Photon on it. I'm like, I... dude, dude, I'm 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 calling a Professor Rambo. I, I I don't care what her name is going to be. Professor I'm calling Marvel. Professor Rambo. <laughs> Kamala said it. <laughs> and um we got yeah, the, yeah go just, ahead just going back to that binary thing mm -hmm. um just going back to that binary thing uh earlier on in the movie as well um there was a point where carol went ballistic and was like you could see her just like glowing with all this power and i've seen this on twitter actually mm -hmm. sorry x uh a couple of times uh we people have mentioned like did Carol actually become binary in that moment as well um obviously she's still being a normal suit uh, she, she's not going to change the suit but um that that could have been a a, a, a cool little like tip off of that um to binary as well during the movie so uh her going into the sun for Hala also she pretty much went full binary there and that's a little bit of a nod to a couple storylines, one being the last days of Captain Marvel, where she kind of dies doing that exact same thing. And another story from the Kelly Thompson run, where she become, she goes into sun, becomes full white to keep the sun going. Uh, I was worried there for a second, because I've seen that imagery in comics too, too many times when she goes into a sun and doesn't come out the other side. Uh, she did, though, thankfully. So th those are a little bit of the comic nods that like we both notice. A lot of this... Is very original to the MCU and just to Marvel storytelling itself. But it's something that isn't original that I got particularly excited about and emotional about is my favorite character made her big screen debut for the very first time in cinematic history. It was for like 10 seconds, but I didn't care. It was fantastic. Kate Bishop uh, was in this movie. And that made me very happy. And Kamala Khan's recruiting her to, it seems, like a young Avengers squad who already name-dropped Cassie Lang. So we can imagine already that this MCU young Avengers squad will consist of Kamala Khan, Kate Bishop, and Cassie Lang. So I thought of a fun idea that we could do quickly, which is who is your dream young Avengers squad? You can only pick six because that is the number. So, are we going MCU over here? Because I already have my head canon of who I want to be in the who I, who I want to be in the MCU. In the MCU one, yes. In this particular squad. Cool. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, um, obviously, the two of them. Um, can, can I just say, Kamala's impersonation of Nick Fury was freaking amazing. <laughs> I was laughing so hard when she did that. I'm like, oh my God, you are a natural. And can we just say that Iman Vellani was probably the best actress in that entire movie. She was just living her best life. She was, at, at, at one point I was like, oh, that's definitely Iman. That's not Kamala right there. <laughs> like she, she just, she eats, breathes, sleeps Kamala Khan and she is such a joy um but yeah going back to to the young avengers uh obviously the two of them hands down um i don't know i'm not i'm not sold on cassie yet so um i know weekend's gonna definitely come up in in agatha mm -hmm. uh house of harkness w what's it called now i don't know i, I lost track um <laughs> agatha. agatha all along <laughs> um yeah so uh I feel like he's you'll definitely be a huge player on that team. Uh Eli, I, I definitely see wanna see Patriot uh, do his thing on the team. America, one hundred percent she should be there. And uh I I feel like we we don't know what's happening with speed. Uh we don't know if if he's actually a thing. Uh but I think we need some muscle on that team and I think that's where Scar is gonna come in eventually. I mean they introduced him for a reason, right? Oh, that's painful. <laughs> they are not going to introduce somebody and just sweep him under the rug. Like, we need some muscle in that team. 
So, <laughs> yeah, I love the Young Avengers. Young Avengers is one, like, it was Hawkeye and the Young Avengers. That's what got me into comics. Uh, I love that team so much. Many iterations of it, or at least the two major iterations of that team. So we're already, I, I'm going to go with what I think the MCU will do rather than what I want because I'm also not sold on Cassie being on the team, but it she seems like a lock at this point. So I, I can really that. only pick three. Yep. I think America's probably going to be on it. I think a magic user would be really well needed on that team. I think Wiccan would probably be on that, even though now you're having two magic users. But I think it still works. But if you have to have Wiccan, or if you have Wiccan, you have to have Hulkling too. And what worries me, because yeah. you said Scar specifically, what worries me with Hulkling is we've now had two projects that could have and possibly should have introduced this character who's a half scroll half Cree, particularly the Marvels. I thought this was going to be the project where we were going to get, get them. Uh, yep. That was not the case. <laughs> so can it be Scar? Sure. Can it be Eli Bradley? Maybe. Could it be Novar? We get Marvel boy thrown in there somewhere in here. Can it be Nova? A young Nova? Uh, you get, we already have a little, you know, Kamala's already on this team, so it's not going to be a one for one young Avengers. We can throw any of the champions in there as well. I think the underdog pick here is Viv Vision. Oh, wow. I think that's the underdog I pick here. But that would take, uh, that would take a Hulkling like spot, they who I don't think that. Hulkling will be on this team just because we've had two opportunities to introduce that character, and we just haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Yeah, but, but where, would they, would, where would they introduce the Vision? Is the Vision series, Vision Quest, is that still a thing? If it is, that's where it is. If it is, yeah. that's where it is. I'm still banking on but, that rumored series being a thing. Yeah. So there to go. Um, okay. I, Division's a cool character too, and that would make that would almost really round about this team to be very young, very modern, and a lot of different viewpoints from different yeah. characters in there as well. So I'd be down with that. That would be a good mix of a Avenger, uh, young Avengers champions. If it's not Division. Give me Nova. Give me Nova. Make this team OP as hell. <laughs> somebody somebody that we actually both forgot about and who has been introduced before is just pull Kid Loki. Kid Loki? Out and and get get him to join. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's already been been introduced in, in the MCU. So he he could be a possibility as well. That's always a possibility. Well, if you want more yep. on the Marvel's discussion, check out the Agents of Fandom podcast available on all your podcasting services and right here on YouTube where they'll be going into a full-on discussion on the movie. Full spoilers, full theories, full everything uh, later next week. I believe on Monday is when that will be dropping. So go check that out when it does because they're going to go into a full deep dive there. We just wanted to touch up upon it. Uh, for the comic reasons, and you know, you love Miss Marvel. Kate Bishop made an appearance. We, there's no way we could not talk about this movie. <laughs> there's no way we could not talk about this movie. So I enjoyed it. I'm actually going to go see it again tonight to really settle down with it. Uh, hopefully, I can actually hear what Amon Valani is saying when she introduces herself to Kate Bishop because I was a bumbling mess when that happened. Literally, barely, only heard Cassie Lang's name drop, and the rest of it, I was just gone emotionally, because uh, that was just really cool and something I wasn't expecting, and I didn't think I'd see anytime soon. Yeah. Now, the the, the moment I, I saw that scene, I was just like, oh my god, 
when Damon sees this, he is absolutely going to flip. <laughs> like uh, a couple of months ago, there were rumors mm -hmm. about that scene actually happening at like being a post credit scene, but like I, I don't think anybody even remembered it. I remember it, it so long I had ago. To remember. Like and, I remembered it, I didn't buy it for a second. I was like. Nah, there's playing with my heart. There's yeah. no like, and that scene essentially went word for word, script for script, how that rumor was. So, I was happy. I was very, very happy with how that played out. Anyway, I'm so happy for you, uh, man. Elated. Just give me a season two now. Anyway, uh, that'll do it for this week's comic corner. We'll be back in a couple weeks talking about more comics, more news. There's always something going on in the comic space. Go support your local comic shops. AF. What's your local comic shop? My local comic shop are there are actually two of them. Readers, uh, Readers Den over in Claremont in Cape Town, and Cosmic Comics. They have branches all over South Africa, and an online store as well. So you can check them out. Go check out Boom Two Comics in Southington, the best comic shop in New England. Copyrighted by me. Definitely the best comic shop in Connecticut, actually voted upon by internet users. So there you go. That'll do it for this week's Comic Corner. My name's Damon. He's AF. Go support your local comic shops. Go read some comics.